welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Herptile video. Hopefully the start of a series, it might be a little bit of an infrequent series, but a series about keeping native herps as well as keeping them in outdoor enclosures. It's the way to go and here in the UK, I'm not sure where you are, but here in the UK, it's definitely a movement that's starting to, to build momentum. And why not? Why not indeed? With the prices of electricity and power this last 12 months going through the ceiling, many people have been getting rid of their animals and their collections, downsizing, breeding less animals and so on and so forth because the electricity prices have actually made it prohibitively expensive, for certainly for some people. The amount of heating and lighting many of our charges require to keep at optimum health and be in perfect condition and enjoy their lives can really, really be affected by the, the cost of keeping them. These people that are now starting to specialise in outdoor enclosures and native herbs, why not? The sun in the sky, the perfect amount of UVB, the perfect amount of heat if you build your enclosures correctly, and it's free, absolutely free. And if you work with outdoor enclosures, something you're really gonna gain is, for most people, I know I'm sort of generalizing, but most people with a garden, you've got way more space outside than you have in your house, for most people. So a, a six foot by four foot enclosure in your house takes up a huge amount of space in a room. It's quite a small area in most gardens. You can even get a whole greenhouse in that space, heated and keep reptiles from further afield than maybe the UK, from Europe and things like that. I actually wish sometimes that I actually haven't got some of the iconic snakes that I've got that I've wanted all my life because I, I won't part with them. But if I did it all again, I think I'd consider actually specialising in native or relatively local to Britain animals in outdoor enclosures. So we're gonna look at different things that, over this series, but for now, series, you know, number one in the series, I went up to see Lee Brindley at UK Crested Newts. Just have a look, just enjoy the video for what it is. Just a window into keeping something absolutely stunning. UK Crested Newts, he breeds all kinds of these animals, and this is the key. Now people are working with them, it's much better and much easier to get these animals captive bred. And that's what we all want to do. The laws where you live vary. Here in the UK, many species can actually can be collected from the wild without any license and kept in captivity. But of course, if everyone does that, that's going to be going back to the bad old days when animals start to become scarce due to the pet trade. And none of us want that anymore. Some great captive stock out there. And Lee's working with colour morphs. For those of you that love your morphs and breeding morphs of different things, whether it's snakes or amphibians, so just enjoy this video for what it is. Just enjoy the beauty of great crested newts, rivaling any tropical fish, any marine fish, any amphibian or reptile from any part of the world. Stunning animals, incredibly easy to maintain, not too difficult to breed, and you know what? Almost free to keep. Why do we hanker after the stuff that's from somewhere else? something we can't get easily, something that's rare in the hobby or rare in the wild. When wherever you live in the world, there's probably some fantastic herps that you can keep, work with, captive breed. We're all crazy people. Enjoy the video and enjoy the other ones in this series as they come along. <laughs> so we're here finally at Lee Brindley's place 
There he is, look. <laughs> and a musician as well. <laughs> <laughs> but look at all this stuff. <laughs> Lee really is, when it comes to great crested newts, morphs and species and subspecies, I think he is the king. And his passion as well is actually frogs, common frogs now. Yeah, so absolutely, yeah. Early yeah. Anything number... European, really, but that's, yeah. Yeah, but you can't have it all, can you, Lee? You can't that's have it all. Right. Oh, you've got to specialise, haven't you? I think you're so. Gonna... I think so, yeah, the best you... way of doing it. I think you're yeah. doing that, aren't you? Yeah, but, uh... you can easily have too big a collection, I think, but... And what I really envy Lee for is his common sense. All of these enclosures, no heating. <laughs> no <laughs> heating. Why didn't I go down that road? <laughs> Is anyone else working with um, common frogs in the UK of morphs and colours? No, not that I'm aware of, no, no. Um, so, the, yeah, all the animals that come from the UK, from wild animals, um, and, yeah, it's something that a lot of people seem interested when they see them, yeah. they see them out there. I think but, it's the future, isn't um, it? Yeah, with no electricity and that kind of thing. It's... I think the big problem, when you, when you take the albinos and that from the wild and you breed them, you get normal-looking offspring, so people aren't really bothered with them and they let them go. And yeah. they don't realise you've got to produce the heterozygous offspring, yeah. breed them together. We're not we're not patient um, as, as humans, are we? Yeah, it's it at least patient, two years it? to get to maturity yeah. as well. So it's but the most of snake breeders are looking at three or four years, aren't they? Every time they've got to grow something yeah. on to, to produce a morph or something. But yeah, yeah. I do think it's the way to go. So Lee's lucky at the moment, he hasn't got any competition, so he scours social media for someone <laughs> that says there's a bright blue frog turned up in my pond, exactly. or one with pol polka dots or something. <laughs> and hence today, he is literally doing a seven hour, is that right? Seven yeah, hour round trip yeah, to yeah. get some frog spawn for some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, as I said earlier, amphibian keepers, they're a crazy bunch. <laughs> <laughs>
if you wondered what the coloured dots on the tanks represent, it's this, a distribution map for the genus Tritorus. The newts are floating, just to make sure they cool down so it's cool water temperature. They've been in my van now for 48 hours, or well, certainly not in my van all that time, but they've been in their little travel box in the cool, but I would imagine they've warmed up more than this water temperature. So have a look at this, I'm gonna flip them around. jeans in him, his head for Albina. Bless them, even in that short time, their crests have gone down. Let's see them in their full glory soon enough. But there we are, following on from last week's trip to collect these guys. Little stone-filled food bags in his aquariums. And you think, well, that's not very naturalistic, is it? some weeds and plants and then we've got a plastic bag they actually lay their eggs on relatively broad leaf water plants they'll lay their eggs on anything great crested nudes but they're certainly in captivity and you know what in the wild in sort of litter filled ponds they've actually known to do the same thing they really like to squash their eggs, their eggs onto plastic bags it's like a really broad leaf squishy plant leaf and of course you can move them if need be easily in one go lots of eggs in one place to a rearing, a rearing container. So that's why that's in there. It's just a really useful tool for breeding great crested newts and another crested newts, European species in captivity. It works well, so, you know, do what the expert does. We're gonna have lots of eggs on there that we can move out should we need to before they hatch and rear them separately. The adults don't seem to keen on eating the eggs, but they will. If there's not a lot of plants and such like, they will eat their offspring. Thanks for watching this little taster, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Click subscribe, and then you're going to see, as and when they come, any more in this series and the other reptile videos on the channel. Really appreciate that. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>